have the pleasure today of sitting down with Justin at One Guy Garage. I said that correctly. Absolutely. Yay. <laughs> Success. For the win. <laughs> Step uh, one done. Right? Yeah. No, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me on Encourage today and, and talking to other uh, local entrepreneurs. And the first question up, I'd ask, you know, what, what got you into the field that you're in? Sure. <laughs> well, man, that's, uh, that's a pretty deep story. So uh, I guess back in uh, 2017, I started uh, an e-commerce business while I was working at okay. uh, Princess Auto. So I had a side gig, as they say. Nice. Uh, but where that really came about, I was fixing my, my dad's old truck that he had gifted me when I was a 16-year-old kid. And I thought, okay, I'm finally going to finish it. And uh, I went over to one of the, the local guys in town here and uh, went to purchase some, some fuel hose. Yeah. And uh, the price was just, just crazy. So I couldn't afford it. So I thought, man, there's got to be a better way. Um, so I ended up reaching out to some manufacturers and getting samples and doing testing and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, I placed an order, brought it yep. in and, uh, without really doing a whole lot, sold out within a couple of weeks. So I thought, okay, there's something here. Wow. Um, and when you asked earlier about the struggles, yeah, yeah. uh, you know, I didn't have a lot of cash at the time. So I actually went to one of those, uh, you know, almost loan sharky type places yep. and took out $30,000 at 30 for 37 percent interest and uh you know ordered in a big order and, uh, wow. and started posting it but uh, the good news is i didn't have to hold on to that too long because the stuff just kept flying moving off and it. moving and growth and growth and growth and uh so it was a, it was a risk but it it was a it was a calculated yeah, risk it was a calculated, was a calculated risk. risk yeah i knew if i had the product i could move it and yep. then uh and then uh, get back to not having to rely on the, yeah. the loan sharks so <laughs> yeah. that's kind of where that started but uh, as that business grew um you know i kept getting asked for more and different things oh. And the thought process around that was, hey, guys fix really nice cars during yeah. the good times. During the bad times, they probably got to fix their existing cars. So we figured, okay, let's open an auto parts store. Cool. Whether it was smart or not, I know I did it in the uh, <laughs> middle of COVID. So September of 2020. Is that, that's when you're officially open? Yeah. September wow. 2020, we opened the doors. And uh, February of 2021, we had a grand opening um, to nice. kind of launch. Um, and when we were uh, doing that, you know, uh, we built the inventory just by guys asking and <laughs> what, wow. what they needed and and pretty soon we're, we're sitting on a ton of stuff that uh, where we started you know fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff and now we got 600 grand worth of stuff in the wow. building so growing quite a bit so. that's amazing but nevertheless you literally opened it what yeah. probably i mean i don't even know what was going through your head at the time <laughs> you know i i think uh i just thought we could do it differently and do it better um made a lot of mistakes along the way but yeah. uh you know the the good thing about me and the team especially is that they they're okay to learn and then change things right all right so we're very adaptable that way so yep. so we make mistakes um but we we at least try and fix them we do our best to fix them you know but it's cool like in my experience i have the ability that i was able to have kind of like a a long track record if you will leading up to the pandemic yeah so yes it was nerve-wracking but you know we didn't know what we didn't know. So it was like, okay, well, this, at the end of the day, yeah. it'll be manageable. You know, we can work from home. We can do things. That's not the case in every business, right? So no, I was, I was definitely <laughs> worried about uh, being asked to close. Um, so, you know, that was in the back of my mind uh, you know, you're six months in and all of a sudden stuff gets locked down again. Yeah. And it was definitely a worry. We actually had a sign put out front that said uh, now selling cans of tuna. Nine ninety nine, like thousand bucks, and then oh, we'll donate any sales of the tuna just to think. Oh, we're an essential business now, right? Right, right. But, right. Uh, it never came to that. We were able to stay open, but <laughs> That's uh, smart, it actually. was. Uh, it was just we're just trying to think of our ways that you know how can we how can we wow. stay open if it comes to it because I know it's a lot of a lot of cash invested to not uh, no doubt. not be able to stay open. It would have really hurt. So so how many people do you have working for you? Uh, right now we're sitting about seven. Good for you. Uh, my kid works here uh, part time after school. Yeah. So he packs the orders for the e commerce side of the business, and he does that every day. Um, wow. So yeah. you do a lot of online sales then? Or? Yeah. So, so the other business, uh, which is called Hot Rock Fuel Hose, um, we ship mostly ah. in the U.S. Um, 90% of the business goes south. We just were at the SEMA show last week. Um, wow. We had, a, we had as an exhibitor. Um, yep. And what was really cool about that show was how many guys came up to us. And not one or two, 50, 60 guys a day. Hey, we already use your stuff. It's awesome. Wow. Um, and the number of vehicles down there um, that had our product on it was was insane. There was there was multiple vehicles wow. in the battle of the builder top forty that used our products. There was Holy. multiple trucks, and and I'm telling this story just to like to the guy at the end of the show, and he says to me, he says, "Dude, we all use your stuff. It's on this truck. It's on that one. It's on this one over here. It's on that one over there." Wow. And then I think, okay, man, I should have been able to leverage this better, right? Put a sign up, direct us to the <laughs> booth. But you know, <laughs> hindsight, next year we'll just be better prepared, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we'll know where our, our product's going to be installed. And so here you have got. You little old Lethbridge, for lack of a better way of saying it, yeah. you're, you're you're essentially doing international business, really. Yeah. Well, we just we just shipped something this morning to New Zealand, so it's definitely wow. going all over. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it's more than just the 
well, it is a local business, but like you're supplying. Yeah, definitely yeah. shipping all wow. over. So that's a that's that's an amazing story. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It was it's pretty exciting. It's it's unbelievable how how it took off how it did. So. That's awesome. So in such a short time, because realistically, what we are talking about two years essentially. Yeah. So this store's been open two years. Um, the physical storefront, yeah. um, covering the different products, and yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting. So we started with the one bay over here, yeah. and then we guys we started dealing with a lot of farmers. Okay. Um, and the farmer said, "Well, can you get us this? Can you get us that?" So that's when we opened this side, and, and uh, unfortunately, another business that was like here had to close. Yeah. Um, and the opportunity came to take the space, and it might have been a little bit too early, yeah. but uh, we decided to take the risk on that as well. And good for you. And expand, and it, it worked out because we actually ran out of room on this side. So <laughs> we, we need the room. We're, <laughs> you, we're you need it. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. I can tell just looking around. It's like, wow, there's a lot here. Yeah. <laughs> so you you what well, you have essentially seven people working with you yeah. uh, how because it's kind of a newer business in a sense like how, how did you build your team out what what was that like what were some of the struggles and the successes of team building yeah so over the you know the two years we've definitely made some mistakes um you know short-term thinking i guess is the way to put yeah. it where we we brought people on the team who maybe had an idea of what this business should be because of previous experience right um and where really we need to be aggressive to go out and, and introduce people to who we were. So we've, right. we've done things like change the compensation structure. Okay. Um, we have people on board now that have goals to really do well in the right. future. Right. Um, and we want to do well with them. So the thought process now about hiring is really, hey, we want you to be a part of the team as a partner. Right. Um, which is really how we go to market for our customers as well. Oh. So a lot of our language is, let's make a partnership. Yep. Okay, let's make a partnership with the customer, but we also want to be a partner with you. Um, and so how we compensate and how we hire and how we interview is a little bit different than maybe That's people exciting. are used to. Um, we're also in a program right now called Growth Catalyst through the Mount Royal University. Okay. And, uh, you know, we're sitting in one of those meetings and, and really kind of, you know, one of those epiphany moments yeah. um, where I'm sitting there in the meeting and, and everybody's talking about their, you know, the values they put on the wall and the mission statement and all that stuff. And it's, uh, you know, you can tell who's the employee and who's the entrepreneur because there's a lot of corporate <laughs> crap. And, and my, my history is a lot of corporate stuff. Yep. Yeah. Right. But I didn't want to be that. So really, it came down to what do we really want from the customer that we get? And it was, I want to sit down and have a beer with them. Yeah. So we put that in there. Yeah. And everybody's like, you can't do this. I can do what I want. It's my business. <laughs> like, I love that's that. really what I want. I want to be able to have a beer with a guy. And you know what? We're partners. We're not just we're not just a customer. We're selling yep. you one thing. We want to sell you 100 things over 100 years. The, the, and then to your kids. I, I relate to that because that's literally part of our business uh you know, wor verbiage. Perfect. Uh, it, 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 and it's even on our website. It's on whatever. But yeah, it's like if, if you're looking for a vendor, yeah. go find a vendor because um, we're not going to be the cheapest. We're not going to be the most expensive. But regardless, yeah. you know, if, if you're looking for a vendor, there's plenty out there. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for a partner, yeah. then yes, you know, we, we want to go through the ups and downs. Um, like in any relationship, it's not ever going to be hundred percent perfect right mistakes get made on Absolutely. both sides yeah and, and same with us like we want to be able to work with people that that are okay sitting down and having hard conversations and the good ones yeah um but that you're you're figuring out solutions and it isn't just like ah you know they're my vendor i don't like them anymore so see you later it's like no no like what what happened yeah right where where did something go sideways where did something go off the rails a little bit that it can all be brought back yeah um, and I found that that kind of changed a little bit with a lot of the digital aspects of business yeah. because, you know, technically everybody's got the world at their fingertips. Yeah. And so building that relationship is actually like more now than ever. Oh, absolutely. Critical. It's one of the most important pieces. Critical. And, uh, we kind of, we really found over the last couple of years that uh, you know, I, I screw up the most probably as a team, you know, just... <laughs> It, it is what it is, but uh, I think the message that I'm really trying to teach these guys and, and teach the team and, and also that hopefully the customers see is, yeah, we're going to yeah. screw up, yep. um, but we're going to do the best we can to, to fix it yep. and admit it when we screwed up. I love you it. Know? So I love that's kind of how we go. We've driven to Calgary a few times to get stuff because yeah. we, we didn't order it by mistake or whatever, yeah. but uh, yeah. That's yeah, just doing, yeah, doing right by the customer at the end of the day. I mean, it doesn't mean that, that the customer is always right, um, but you really should try and do everything possible to make sure to mitigate yeah, absolutely. And, and make, make them walk away at the very least saying, Hey, they did what they could for me. Yeah. Even if the relationship didn't work out. Like I always say to my team too, like if somebody, if somebody leaves here, 
the main thing I care about is that they can't walk away saying that we didn't do our yeah. best, right? And, and that they're not going to walk away to tell the next company that they go work with, oh yeah, you know, those guys, yeah. da, 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 da. It's like, <laughs> you know what? They were great, but they didn't work out. Yeah. I can appreciate that. That that happens in life, right? So, <laughs> so, yeah. No, that's that's really cool. I, I love I love just seeing how. I mean, I know you were doing it longer, but like, yeah. As in terms of the physical store, just like realistically, like the growth that I'm looking at in such a short period of time is. Yeah, there's uh, there's a couple things that interest me with that is the number of guys that maybe came in when we first opened, yeah, and then they haven't come for a while and they decide to come back and they walk around and they go, oh. You guys change. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> it's fun though, right? And, They're uh, like, wow. <laughs> yeah. The flip side is how many people still come in and go, I didn't even know you were here. Right. Right. Like, when did you open? Two years ago? And you got this much stuff? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think a lot of that comes to the history and I kind of know the industry a little bit working, right. working at my last job. And yeah. I know what moves and I know what people are doing and so just making educated decisions around what to bring in. Is that what got you to... I guess, flip the switch to entrepreneurship? Like, obviously, you had this quote-unquote side gig, but... Yeah, no, I, I was like uh, the... I, entrepreneurship has always kind of been in my in my blood. Yeah. Um, my first business, I was 13 years old. Oh, no way. I lived in Claire's home, and I, I rode my little bike downtown yep. and, and fixed computers and sold computers for, for oh, no uh, a business. And uh, I remember the, the local guy in town was getting upset because this kid was stealing the business because... Uh, <laughs> Well, he just knew what he was doing, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, the customers liked me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, can I get into your building after five o'clock? Because I got a I got a test this afternoon. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was that's, that's how, hilarious. That's how I started, and then yeah, I done a lot of a lot of other businesses that have failed. Yep. Um, you know, I had a web design business for a okay, while I that I ended that. up selling, and then uh, there was another business where I started when I moved here. I decided, oh, let's do that again. Yeah. But most of the clients were in Calgary, so it was a bit of a headache. So I just kind of closed her down. But so so you it isn't that you were just working and then flip the switch you 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 have a it's background in kind of been there for yeah since a long time ago yeah yeah this was just the one that ended up technically sticking yeah that's right <laughs> awesome that's pretty exciting man 13 though 13 is that what you said yeah 13 yeah, i couldn't even drive yeah that's that, I, I ride my bike <laughs> that is what i could uh i i can appreciate that because I, when i was i guess it would have been about the same give or take yeah um I was in junior high and they had those like school work programs. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. And at the time, you know, I was fascinated with like music and, you know, car stereos were a yeah. big thing back then. Right. <laughs> I'm aging myself, but. Hey, I was around during that. But, too, man. you know, right. That was like the cool thing, like get those subs in there, yeah. you know, the, the different audio equipment. And so I was fascinated by it. And so I, desperately wanted to work at a and b sound okay and uh so when i got the work placement uh they put me in like the cd department and when the work placement was over yeah they're like yeah okay like see you later right and uh i remember going to the manager i'm like hey like i'll do anything like what what do you got what do you got what yeah. do you got and he's like kid like i got nothing for you like you're you know, yeah. you're too young you know <laughs> da, 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 da. and i kept going back like okay. All the time, every week, I'd be like, "Do you got a job for me?" Yeah. No. Do you got a job for me? No. And you wore him down. Yeah, like just totally. And then finally, one day, I'm like, "Do you got a job for me?" And yeah. he's like, "Okay, I'll tell you what, but you're not gonna like it." And I'm like, yeah. "Okay, what do you got?" He's like, "I don't know if you're familiar with the building, but yeah, it, it's kind of a big, almost C parking lot, right? It's got that whole back section to yeah. it." And uh, he's like, "It was just after spring," and he's like dude, you got to sweep the parking lot. Yeah. And I'm like, like the whole parking lot? He's like, yeah, I need the whole parking lot swept. Yeah. If you're game to do that, I'll pay you to do the job. And I'll, I can't remember exactly what it yeah. was, but it was like five bucks an hour, right? Is what he was willing to pay yeah, okay. for me to sweep the parking lot. And I was like, cool, I'll do it. Yeah. And I didn't even finish with him. And I got home and I got on the phone and I called a buddy of mine. I'm like, hey, How'd you like to make two fifty an hour? <laughs> and he's like, doing what? I'm like, come help me sweep a parking lot. <laughs> and so it was like efficiency, right? But yeah. that was like a, one of those exposed moments of, okay, like all I care about is doing the job good and quick. Yeah. Because then maybe I can ask him for a job, right? And so long and short, after that got completed, and yeah. he's like, okay, 
you can I'll hire you to be a janitor and so I was you know cleaning the floors cleaning toilets yeah and I was only there for less than a year okay but by the time I had left I was managing the warehouse okay cool as just a young kid and he was just like you're so efficient you know <laughs> da, 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 da. but it's pretty crazy like from yeah from sweeping a parking lot to uh you know managing the warehouse inventory and all that yeah, stuff that's pretty like, cool and so I share that story with you because similar to what you're talking about like yeah it, it, it you gotta like don't be afraid to like start at the bottom yeah I, I think a lot of times in today's world there's some expectations to start at the top to, <laughs> yeah to kind of start at the top yeah and, yeah we see that in hiring all the time and like, I get it like I get it like I get the world uh I get the economy I get all those things like you you gotta you gotta be able to put food on the table and I understand that yeah. um but at the same time you know Work for it, prove yeah. it, show it, you yeah. know, develop, right? And uh, I think that's pretty important too. So absolutely. So th does that play into like your employee employer culture at all? Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as we continue to kind of figure things out, I yeah. guess um, um, a lot of the conversation is like, we want you to do well, yeah, but you got to do well, yeah. Um, and that's kind of how we explain it to these guys. I mean, where we screwed up in the beginning is, is you know, we we kind of just didn't really know what we're doing, so we yeah. bring people in, and okay, we're doing this today, we're doing that today, we're setting up the store, or we're moving inventory, um, but there was really no long term thought process as to how mm. we how we pay, how we get them to grow, and, and what the outcome is at the end. Right. So I mean, nowadays it's really clearly defined. Like, here's the role. Here's what we expect from you. Mm. Here's where we want you to be in, you know, six months and a year. Um, mm. And the potential is there to really earn good money. Right. Um, but we need you to build relationships with our customers right. um, as a business and as yourself. Um, I like that. I like that. That's a good takeaway. I gotta, I'm going to digest that one a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> well, because it's true. You know, some roles are tough, though. Like some yeah. roles are tough to, to, I guess, implement extra performance, uh, if you want to call it that, incentives. Um, so it can be challenging. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I like what you're saying there. It's just, it's just thinking about that and you know, even if it's slow, finding yeah. ways that you can incorporate it, I guess would be a, yeah, I mean, I can think of some conversations I have where, you know, there's, there's not too many customers in here, yeah. right? Okay. What are we doing to invite them in? Right. You know, it could be a social media post. Yeah. It could be making up a new flyer and send an email. Right. Or it could be a phone call from right. some of your guys that you haven't been in in a while. Yeah. So there's there's that coaching that happens behind, uh, you totally. know, what does the downtime look like and, and how do we, what does good look like? It's yes. really, really important as well. So, I mean, good to me isn't scrolling TikTok at the till. Good to me <laughs> is, you know what, you got that phone in your hand, dial a number, yeah. and talk to somebody about, you know, how we can help them and help improve their business. Make a connection. Make Absolutely. a connection. Yeah, I, I get that too, you know, activity 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 something my business partner kind of instilled in me yeah uh when we became partners he's like just keep the activity going and you know yeah it'll it'll start to come right the minute that you shut the activity taps off it's not going to happen right away and that's what people yeah. don't realize like um i was even just talking to a guy the other day and i said like for example sales cycles uh recently have changed yeah. at least in in my business um where you could sit down, present, and get to a, a, a signing. Yeah, you know, could take anywhere from you know an hour to a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, now a lot of those are taking two to three months. Yeah. Um, people are taking a lot more time to make that decision and da 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 da. So, yeah, it, it it's even lengthened like the sales cycle process. Yeah. So what you're like the seeds you're planting today. Yeah, it might take time to grow for sure. Right, and so if you stop, you don't, that, that could affect you six, eight months, 12 months down the road. Yeah. Not just tomorrow. Um, um, absolutely. I got, I got a story that I'll share. Sure. And um, it's just, uh, you say activity and, and how I yep. say activity creates reaction, right? Yep. So that's kind of where, where we will. But the uh, SEMA show was interesting and for this example, and we do trade shows in town here where we do a similar thing. So okay. everybody in the car business loves decals. They yep. love stickers. So we printed 10,000 decals for SEMA, but we also printed decals when we do the trade shows here. You know, we do, okay. you know, we sponsor the uh, street wheeler shows. So yep. we set up a booth or, you know, we did our own car show down at uh, uh, the, the old Alan Watson school there. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah same thing, set up a tent. Car and, shows and yeah, different but, things. Yeah. Uh, you know what activity, which is, Hey, do you want a decal? Hey, do you want a decal? Right. And, and uh, SEMA show was interesting because, you know, we're, we're sitting here at our booth and, you know, there's vendors on all around us and, and day one we're at it. 
hey, you want a jack code, right? And we all got right. these name tags. They they say, oh, where they're from. So you know, you pick up on things. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. you know, you're from Canada. You got to take a jack code. You're yeah. you're one of you're not. You got to be nice, right? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden they take a jack and they start having a conversation, and then you kind of interact Simple. with people, right? You know, the funny thing is, is we're doing that. You know, we're halfway through day one, and and then all of a sudden our neighbors are starting to do the same thing. Because, you know, instead of sitting at the desk, yeah. nobody's interacting with them. And we're talking, we're having half hour conversations with potential customers because Love we decided it. to engage them. Love um, it. So it was, it was interesting to see the neighbors all of a sudden and they're doing, they're doing the same thing. So and that's all it takes. It's just yeah. like, like that was your icebreaker. Yeah. Just to say, hey, here you go. You want one? Yep. And then you start learning about each other. Exactly. Or sharing a story or whatever, right? It, 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 yeah. People like to talk. Oh, yeah. People like to share their stories, their experiences. So it doesn't take a lot to to spark that conversation if you just are willing to get off your seat and, yeah. and well, engage. I, pay, pay too much money for that booth not to, not to engage <laughs> right. people. So definitely have to take part. Speaking of the e-commerce side too, I, I'll say both, but sure. the e-commerce side intrigues me too. And, and I think it might intrigue a lot of people that probably see lots on social media, um, you know, you see stories about Amazon reselling and this and that. And so as someone that's kind of gone down the gauntlet of e-com, like what did you find was the best way to attract customers? Uh, when I first started that business, I, I kind of did it uh, in a way, a little bit guerrilla style. Yeah. So I would go on Facebook and join yeah. how to build truck groups. And, yeah. and uh, I would Smart. just make a post in there. And, you know, every day I had a, a process where in the morning I'd post in 50 groups. Smart. You know, here's what we got. Check us out. Um, and that really is what kind of kicked us off. Um, and then obviously, you know, we started getting to Facebook marketing and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, once we started getting some traffic. Um, but yeah, that was where it began. Um, and we're still active in a lot of those groups today. But instead of us having to be the one that says, hey, check us out. Right. You know, by the time I see the post, there's 15 customers that have said, these guys are the best. Check them out. Right. And like, it's crazy. And then finally, I get to the bottom. I'm like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's super smart because joining the, I get, well, we were just talking about that even off yeah. camera, but like being part of these, these Facebook groups, they're, they're actually networking opportunities. Yeah, if absolutely. you treat them accordingly, um, you can get a lot out of them. It, it, you know, yeah. well, I mean, perfect example is how many people don't know we exist still. So right. There you go. <laughs> but, in, but, yeah. in, but in the, but on the other front, like you're saying, yeah. you, by you joining those other groups, you're actually engaged in the community of, that car, uh, you know, the car groups. Yeah. And, and so you're able to engage to, to, in a way that it speaks to them. Uh, you're speaking directly to the people that ultimately can become your customers. Yeah. And yeah, that's, I love that. I think that's super smart. That's brilliant, actually. How long ago did you do that? 2017 is when we opened that business in September. Wow. So September 2017. And uh, yeah, I just remember being so excited when that first sale, because I got the inventory. Yeah. That day, I'm like, okay, I put it as available, sent out an email, and I got 30 people on the email list at that time. Oh. Hey, we, we got our stuff finally. Yeah. And uh, I remember sitting on the couch, and 9 p.m., me and my wife were watching TV, and then you, you got that Shopify yeah. cha-ching sound. Yeah. I'm like, what the heck was that? I never heard it before. Right. So I'm like looking at my phone, I'm like, holy crap, I sold something. <laughs> <laughs> the excitement. <laughs> yeah, right. like, it was super exciting. And then I'm like, okay, well, what box do I put it in? I didn't even know what I was doing. How do I ship this? <laughs> So I'm not Canada Post trying to get a label, and it's like that's 40 bucks to ship to the states. That's crazy. You're, you're like, wait a minute, that's my profit. Yeah. So, so definitely that was uh, something I had to figure out too. But uh, we had to sort it sorted out, and yeah. I mean, now we uh, we ship tons of boxes. I wow. Mean, uh, there's probably 60 sitting in the back right now to go south. So it's Black Friday week. So right, right. That's super cool. Yeah, sitting there figuring out what you're gonna package it in. And yeah. Oh yeah. Gonna... I definitely, I definitely didn't have the thought process there. I remember going to the dollar store and buying one of those bubble bags and, yeah. and stuffing it in there and. And, you know, the first one went okay, but then all of a sudden, you know, it got busier and busier. And then the, the Canada Post lady comes by the house. She's like, you can't put them in these bags anymore because they, they oh. like poke out. And then the, the, the ladies were cutting their hands, I oh. guess. So she's like, just please put it in a box. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, so that I had to change that approach. And, yeah. <laughs> you, you've had kind of a cool roller coaster then in that regard. Yeah, well, definitely been a lot of just figuring it out as we go. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, Sometimes we win with that and sometimes it, it causes some problems, but at the end of the day, we figured it out. Ah, it's a fun journey at the end of the day. Exactly. <laughs> That's super cool. So, yeah, I mean, you literally unloaded some awesome stories here with me. Uh, like takeaways that I, cool. I'm seriously, like takeaways that I'm <laughs> yeah. going to like honestly think about and be like, huh, how, how, how what, when, where, why See? can I, can I do that? Um, 
talking about even just inspiration, I guess, uh, you know, are there any uh, books, audio books, things like that, that you, that you listened to recently or that made an impact uh, in some which way, shape or form? Podcasts. Uh, I'm yeah. really into the podcast uh, scene. Um, something you can put on the truck when you're driving four yeah. or five hours. Um, How I Built This is one of my favorites. How I um, Built This. From NPR. Okay. Um, it's, it's quite a good podcast about uh, startups and what they nice. went through. Um, as far as books go, um, The Four is a, is a good book the that four. I like. What's it's the all four about, about? Uh, the four social media and yeah. internet companies and, yeah. and how they're out to yes. actually screw you. Yes, <laughs> so, I have heard. I actually, yeah. I, I think I've, I've listened to part of it uh, okay. as an audio book yeah. uh, or podcast similar uh, that there was even, I think a, a documentary or something. Probably. It, yeah. yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. So that, that interests me. Um, I'm always reading books and, yeah, and listening to, to audio and podcasts and, and that's kind of, you know, you always take some tidbits away and, oh yeah, you know, not everything own, applies. No. Yeah. Put your own spin on it sometimes yep. and, yep. and, uh, go from there. Um, I would say in this, in this business today, you know, probably the biggest challenge that we have is getting out of the weeds and thinking strategically. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm clearly still involved in the day to day, uh, quite right. often, you know, I'm still interacting with customers and, you know, yesterday was a good example. I didn't leave the front desk, but I still had six hours of, of other stuff to do to, to right. keep the place running. So, I mean, that's, uh, you know, getting that time figured out where you can spend time, not just working in the business, but on the business yep. and, and figuring out how it can scale. Yep. Um, so scale is a conversation that we have often. It's also a good book. I would recommend it scale. Um, but if it can't be duplicated, then, then what's the point? That is, I agree with you a hundred percent there. I've literally like the past two years, everything that we do is is it scalable yeah is it scalable is it scalable if it's not scalable let's rethink it let's yeah absolutely. find a different way or, or or uh and even just in the processes it doesn't yeah. even have to be like sales uh is the process scalable oh absolutely um, i'll give you i'll give you one example that's a good story and sometimes it just takes a second set yeah. of eyes on something so we're shipping stuff to the states we get it picked up in the evenings, usually around 5.30, but sometimes the truck gets stuck at the border or it gets delayed, so they don't come till 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I would always just come back or I'd stay here, wait for them. It wasn't until uh, one of my other team members joined us and he goes, why don't we just put a bin on the back of the lot? I'm like, you idiot. <laughs> why didn't I think that? <laughs> yeah, like such a simple solution, but it saves so many hours of time. So, I well, mean. But sometimes it's just the way it's communicated. Uh, 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 an audio book I just finished is called... Uh, uh, the Ultimate Sales Machine okay. uh, by a guy named Chet Holmes, uh, who was kind of like the right hand guy to Charlie, or worked with Charlie Munger, oh, okay. with you know Warren Buffett, all that stuff. Um, and even though it's called the Ultimate Sales Machine, pretty much the entire book is on scalability and yeah. processes and commitment. And uh, e even with with my team in a creative space, we're like, oh, you know, well, let's onboard the customer, right? Yeah. And slowly but surely, I kept asking, like, guys, are we asking, like, all the same, like, right questions when we onboard someone? Well, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so anyway, not to drag the whole story out, but, but what was really interesting is I would have these conversations with my team, and it, it didn't seem to materialize. Like, I would say it. Yeah. But we, it wasn't clicking. Like it, yeah, it wasn't didn't get executed and, after the fact. <laughs> and I, and so I, as I listened to the ultimate sales machine, he just said one thing that kind of like stuck in my brain. And when I repeated that to the team, they're like, "Oh, now we get it!" <laughs> and bang, like it was okay. all I inspired. And, and and it was such a silly line, but he just said, "You have to operate as if like your business tomorrow is going to explode." Mm -hmm. And you have to hire a hundred people tomorrow. Yeah. Like tomorrow, a hundred people you got to hire tomorrow. There are no ifs, ands, or buts. You need a hundred staff. They're coming in the door tomorrow. Do you have the systems and, and, and things in place where yeah. the guy can walk in the door and start doing, doing what he needs to be doing and know what he needs to be doing. Yeah. And I'll, and as soon as I said that, especially to my management team, they're like, Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't look at it that way, right? Like, yeah. like I know what I'm doing. So when I'm onboarding, I know I'm asking these questions. But even though you were asking us to be like repeatable in, yeah. in certain aspects, you're right. Like we never set it up for it to be like, here's the, sh you know, hand this off, get it done. Yeah. And so, yeah, now over like the last few months since going through that, it's like everything has got like this nice systematic yeah. way of going through it. 
so that even if we miss something, uh, uh, and miss it maybe isn't the right word, but even if we uh, are, are going through the process and we're forgetting yeah. something, even if it doesn't apply, we've got it kind of as part yep. of the checklist. So we can skip it if we want to, but it's there. Like it's, yeah. it's one of those steps where it's like, you could, you're choosing to miss this for either a relevant reason or whatever that applies to a customer, but it isn't that it wasn't there for you to be like, oh man, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a similar conversation here, except it was, do you need to be the hero every day? Oh. And they like to be the hero, right? Because, oh, I saved it because we made a mistake yep. or whatever happened and we solved the problem. And so now we're the hero for the customer. Love said, it. Wouldn't it be cooler if you didn't have to be the hero every day and you could just have the process to be followed? Ah, that's even better too. So I, I actually like what you were saying initially. And now that you said the end part, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> that actually is even better. <laughs> so don't be a hero. Just have the process so you don't have to be the hero. Yeah. That's actually pretty powerful. Well, to end on, a, on, on our interview today, I got, I got a question. Knowing what you know today, and it, especially in, in your brick and mortar side, because that, that, that's the most recent uh, portion of your business. Knowing what you know today, uh, anything you would have honestly like wish you could have told yourself at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> Probably about 100 things, 100,000 maybe. But, uh, and I, I was truly looking at building a proper business. I would hire the right leaders first. Mm. Um, instead of hiring the bottom first. Okay. So build the team for leadership. Top, like top, top down. Top to bottom, yeah. right? And, and get those processes and expectations set early. Hmm. Um, we, we winged it too often. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would do that differently for sure. Okay. Um, we're fixing it now, so it's all good. I mean, <laughs> the, the goal isn't one store. Yeah. It's, it's 40. So. That's awesome. Yeah, well, that's good. You say awesome because a lot of people are looking at you crazy. <laughs> no, you know what? That, that's that's just funny you say that because I, I, you, and again, honestly, if you get a chance, I really recommend you listen to that yeah. audiobook um, because that's basically what it is. You know, too, too many people don't dream big enough. Yeah. And, and you got to dream big because same thing. Yeah, I'm going to use your, your, your dream as an example, but okay, you want 40. Well, what happens if you got to 10? Yeah. Like 10 is better than not dreaming about having, you know, you know what I Absolutely, mean? Like, yeah. nope. like 10 will get you to 40 at some point. But if, if all you're thinking about is how do I just keep this store? Yeah. You know, how do I make this store work? You know, you'll stay with Yeah. You never get there. You never and, get any holiday time. Yeah. And, and one of the things that, that came out of the audiobook that, that even we've implemented is uh, writing down your top 100 dream customers. Yeah. And then coming up with a system to communicate with them every couple of weeks to every month. Yeah. That's, so they, that's funny. We just may, did that. <laughs> may take years, right? Before yeah. they buy from you. But like, yeah. I always say, you know, at some point, it doesn't matter because you and I will both do it too. But at some point, that person, whoever they're dealing with, uh, whatever business they're dealing with, at some point is going to have one of those kind of negative experience moments. Yeah. Whether we like it or not, it's, it's bound to happen whether it's a conversation, whether it's a delayed order, or whatever that is. If you're always at least planting that seed with that, your dream customers, yeah. one way or another, at some point, they're going to have that experience and they're going to be like, I'm going to reach out to that company, that guy, that girl yeah. that, that, that keeps reaching out to me, even though I've you know, deleted every email or whatever the situation <laughs> might be. Um, you know, Today's the day because yeah. you kept, you, you were memorable at least as an option. And uh, so that's like talking about the ultimate sales machine. That's kind of one of those things where I'm like, that is something again, that is like a, a simple, but yeah, like you just don't think about it sometimes that way of like, what's your direction and just keep feeding that direction. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. But like you say, if you've got a hundred and you land 20 of them, yeah, that's, man, that's, that's a big you got a whole different business all of a sudden. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. We definitely screwed uh, a lot of that up. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> so we'd, we'd go out and see somebody and then something would happen and we wouldn't follow up for right. four to six weeks or they asked for something and we didn't do it urgently. Right. And, yep. and so we screwed that up more than once, more than once. So now we're, now we're having to go back and say, we're sorry. Yep. We, we fixed our, our processes here a little bit so we, we can be better. Yep. But uh, yeah, we definitely goofed that up uh, more than once. And, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. It, you know, again, it might take time to build the trust again, yep. but at least you did it. Right, you you acknowledged it. Yeah. You, for lack of a better way of saying it, you manned up. 
said, Hey, I messed up. I want to make it right. You know, hopefully you give me a chance, you know, yeah. whenever you're willing to. And I think that's admirable. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Awesome. Justin. It was awesome to get to know you a little cool, bit man. better, know your business and see it uh, definitely in person. Uh, uh, you've done an amazing job here, man. I'm, I'm impressed. Awesome. I'm proud appreciate of you, it, brother. Good for you. Yeah, thanks, Good for you. Yeah, thanks cool. for that was time. fun. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.